Hi, I'm Tony Eels. This is the Dogs Queens NVIDIA News Channel. We're here today at Brookfield Ag Show, Brisbane's best ag show. And we're going to be bringing general specialists to you in just a minute. We've got all of our group winners who are getting ready outside the ring for general specials. Our general special judge today is Mr. Jeff Kill. And we're going to go to that in a minute. Coming up after general specials, we have a really special interview with Dogs Queensland President, Mrs. Ula Greenwood. And we're going to have a bit of a chat about ag shows and how the demise of some of the ag shows we have, and maybe what we can do as Dogs Queensland members to maybe encourage a resurgence in the ag shows in the greater southeast Queensland area. That'll be coming up after general specials, uh, but we're getting ready right now. I think the steward's ready to go, and we're going to head off with our group one winner, our toy group winner, which was the Cavalier. Young dog, that's a Blenheim. Red and white, some people will call it, but the technical term is a Blenheim Cavalier. Cavaliers, of course, come in four colors. Blenheim a try. Here we have that We're magnificent Scotty again. The Wheaton Scotty. Most Scotties are in black, but this is a Wheaton. Lovely, Terrier. lovely dog. Big fan. Group the group winner from the, the Gundog Terrier. group is the English Pointer. Group three. Lovely black and white English Pointer. Now we have the Afghan from group four. Just completed group four judging. The Afghan was the winner. Group five is that Kelpie again. Lovely black Kelpie. Group six is the Siberian. The Afghan Hound, the and Group four. 7, last but not least, is the Keysong. Once again, that Mr. Darcy, who's so consistent the in Group Siberian 7 at the moment. And Wonderful lineup we have here today so at Brookfield Ag Show. The Cavalier, the Scotty, the Pointer, the Afghan. So, so comment below who you think would be your pick for Best in Show today. today. What you say isn't going to make a difference because it will already so be judged and done by the time you get to comment, but put it in there and, and so see how you fare. Now, a lot of people might know, but the judge, Mr. Jeffrey Kill, his mother is a, was a long-time Cavalier breeder in North Queensland. So this is a breed, in fact, that he's very, very familiar with. And Cavi is out and he's out and back. So Mr. Kill can have a look at the, the at the movement on this Cavalier. And you can look up to the breeds on the ANC Looking to see that it's nice Australian and National Kennel Club website. If you're interested in finding out more about the breed standards for your pure breed of dog. Cavalier's going around the to the... Cavalier is a very popular family pet. Cavalier is going to the end of the line, and we have that magnificent Wheaton Scotty. And here we see the Scottish Terrier. Mr. So to judge best in the show, one has to be an all breeds judge, which means that you are qualified to judge each of the seven groups. On average, it takes at least a couple of years to uh, pass a group. Uh, with um, training in theory and in practice. So it's quite a long haul to become a all-breeds judge here in Australia. And the breed standard describes all the elements for the construction of the dog, history of the dog usually, and also describes the dog in the mood. So you can see the judge looking at the Scottish Terrier on the mood. And basically, he's comparing that with the ideal example of the breed, no doubt in his mind's eye. So we've moved on from terriers to gun dogs. You can have a word now, Tony, quick. Here we have the English pointer. Of course, Mr. Kill is quite a famous cocker spaniel exhibitor and breeder of long-time repute so 
has judged Ashley has I'm fairly certain his own pointers in his time uh, lot, big gun dog family so here we have the pointer now, this is a breed with a very illustrious history behind it you see um, pictures of um, pointers in very old portraits going back to the 17th 18th well certainly the 18th and 19th centuries Very classic breed of dog. <laughs> and you can see the thrashing tail is a characteristic of this breed. And talking about all breeds of dogs, uh, the Afghan Hound is supposedly one of the, I think it's the three oldest known breeds of dog. And of course originates in Afghanistan. Uh, it's um, very loving with its family, but it is quite an aloof style of sighthound. Uh, it's actually supposed to look at you and through you. So they tend not to be, when you're judging them, not to be a, a smoochy breed of dog, but they have wonderful breed characteristics when you live with them. You can see this is uh, a breed that requires a great deal of grooming and preparation. But once you have an Afghan, it's very hard not to have an Afghan now. Back in the 70s, that was a very popular breed of dog. In fact, in some ways, it's been too popular. I think every townhouse in Sydney had an Afghan hound. So that's the group four of the hound group winner. Takes us to the working dogs. And this is, of course, an Australian breed of dog, the Kelpie. This is a dog that has um, assisted generations of graziers here in Australia. It's a super sheep dog, but also makes a wonderful family pet. Very popular. Being a short-coated dog, it's low maintenance, very intelligent, very biddable, a dog that trains very well. You can see it shows a, that lovely, tireless, fluid movement. Because it's a dog that's been bred to work all day on sheep property. <laughs> Okay, and moving around for a last circus. So we move from Australia to the other side of the world. This is the Siberian Husky, uh, another breed of dog that's um, very popular here in Australia. It's in our utility dog group, group six. It's a very active breed of dog. And of course, you know, has um, lived many generations in, in the snow climate. So if you're interested in any of these breeds, um, do contact, we well, can speak to the exhibitors here today when judging is completed, uh, but also you can contact Dogs Queensland for more information about South Dogs and, um, and breeders. So here we have a Spitz breed, this is a Keys Hon. No. And you can, if you can see it closely enough, they have sort of like spectacles that's called around the eyes. Not real spectacles, but um, it has that look. And the Spitz breeds are also very popular family dogs. Make great companion dogs. 
So you're seeing a lovely cross-section uh, of, of breeds in our dog family. So you're just asking people to move back a little bit from the road. So we've seen each of those uh, group winners being individually examined by our judge, Mr. James Hill, the Queensland judge, who judges extensively overseas, as well as in other Australian states and territories. Can I have all red right standing by, please? 50, 129, 162, 252, 289. 350 and 384. So it's up to the judge as to how he runs their ring. So it looks like some shortlistings happening here. He wants a second look at some of our finalists here. So we're seeing the Afghan Hound. We're seeing a wonderful display of very professional handling here. Uh, excellent handler makes it look really easy. And you can see we've got quite a, a lineup of excellent handlers here. So Scottish Terrier has gone round. So it looks like we might have three shortlisted here. And Scottish Terrier. Congratulations. And the group judge today for Terriers was Mr. George Ness, who is uh, internationally renowned. Terrier specialist. So it's been a Terrier day. So next we see the runner-up in the Terrier group returning to the ring with West Harlem White Terrier. Because this dog is eligible to contest runner-up in show. Baby's getting ready. 46. Because we're talking the number two in show, so the number two in the terrier group is eligible to contest this too. So this is a dog that this judge has not judged earlier today, because it was uh, Mr. George Ness who was judging the group. So he's doing a full examination, so you can see what transpires here. So he was checking the bite, now looking at the lay of shoulder, feeling the ribbing, looking at the construction of the hindquarters, and any other accoutrements. And now, seeing that construction that he's determined on the table in motion. So going up and back is a good way to assess the correctness of the dog's movement that is going away and coming forward to judge. And now it's an opportunity to look at the side gate of the dog as it moves around. And back to its position, second in line. So, what a beautiful lineup of dogs we've seen here today. And the run up in show has gone to the Afghan Hound. Oh, wonderful. Congratulations. So, we're down to the best in show, runner up in show. And they will automatically win the classes that they were exhibited in today. Uh, but now we're seeing the baby puppy in show being judged. Our baby. These puppies are aged just between three and six months of age. So it's early days in their showing career. And you can see them having a good time. So we've got the Stucky Bull Terrier. Staffordshire Terrier. We've got the Pocket Spaniel. And Beagle from the Hound Group. And look how cute are they. Just to let all exhibitors know, both the um, Best in Show and Runner Up in Show both came from the Open Group.
So the other classes will be starting with baby puppy, we're going to go through minor puppy, we're going through puppy, junior, intermediate, osprey, and finally they'll be Utah in show. So there's lots ahead here. No, no, no. We have the Italian Greyhound is making its way off around now. It's a uh, blue fawn and white. Is how I would describe that young dog. Italian Greyhound, of course, from the toy group. Now we have a baby Stafford. Is our baby and group winner from group two from the Terrier group. Group three, of course, about to come to the table now is the Cocker Spaniel. The hound group is the baby beagle. Group five is the baby Swedish Valhund. Affectionately known in this state as baby land shark. Lovely family breed of dog, very family orientated. Group six, the utility group is a baby Siberian Husky. And group seven winner is a, a Sholo Exquintly, which of course is a hairless breed of dog. Ironically, which some of them do take quite a bit of grooming and skin care more than grooming itself. Uh, with the Sholo, with the hairless breed, you need to make sure that your blackheads are all taken care of and the skin is exfoliated and clean and healthy and the pores can breathe. We have our little baby cocker, a little black munchkin on the way out and back. A merry little cocker, the tail should wag furiously. The word merry, of course, is mentioned I think at least five times in the breed standard. So we're always looking for that happy, outgoing temperament. Of course, at this age in a baby, we're just looking for fun, fun, fun. Baby Beagle. As a baby in group and in show exhibitor, a baby Beagle is your arch nemesis because they are so damn cute. At some point, they turn into Beagles but they look at that little face you can see on the screen it is just gorgeous like a little wind up toy beautiful movement down and back tail up happy wagging everything you're looking to find in a beagle This young little bitch is very pretty head. A lovely baby exhibit of the breed. As I said, this is the Swedish Valhund. It's kind of the Swedish interpretation of a corgi in a lot of ways. One of the short-legged herding breed, working breed here in Australia. They also do come in a natural bobtail as well as a tailed variety. The Valhund. I'm hoping he doesn't jump the fence. He might let his jaws just go. And we have from Group Six our Siberian Husky. Uh, Mr. Kill did do group six today, I believe, and group seven. So this would have been his baby and group winner, which is why he gave it a cursory look, just to refresh his memory when he judged the dog before. Round to the end of the line. And then we'll have our group seven baby, our Sholo. The Sholo's come in the, the black or slate gray color. I think this is called a fawn, but I'm not, I'm actually not certain, but a fawn or a red.
Young Dog. Seems to have some lovely structure. Stands four square every time he comes to a stop. The handler has to do very little to actually stack the dog. He pretty much is doing it himself, which is a sign of a well-constructed dog usually. And the fruit bowl goes to the fruit bowl goes to the baby beagle. Well done to the baby beagle. I believe it is a first litter for this new prefix. Well done. It's a lovely young baby beagle. Well done to all the baby and show participants. And uh, that's going to wrap up our coverage here today at Brookfield Show. So don't forget to comment, to like, and to share the video on our Facebook channel. Until next time, I'm Tony Eels, and this is the Dogs Queensland Video News Channel. Bye for now. Hi, I'm Tony Eels. This is our Dogs Queensland president, Mrs. Ula Greenwood. Welcome, Ula. Thank you, Tony. So, what we're we're here at a show that's very dear to your heart. You, yep. you run the show here at Brookfield Ag. It's a great. What do they call it? The best little country show in Brisbane, or something? Yes, that's right. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. And it's a great area. We both, we're both local here. Yeah. And something that's really dear and and kind of front of house for Dogs Queensland is how we rejuvenate and resuscitate yeah. a lot of our ag shows in the South East Queensland area. Yeah. Yeah. How do you think we look at start doing that? Um, well thanks for the question. It, it is something that's um, very close to my heart. I think the agricultural shows are a wonderful window on Dogs Queensland and the various activities we engage in uh, and I think it's a, potentially a good source of new members um, and how, how we encourage uh, dog shows at Aggie shows. I think it's um, people being more aware, Dogs Queensland members being more aware of what Aggie shows are in their area and looking whether they can give a helping hand yep. to the running of the shows. Now I know like here today, um, I probably just had three or four volunteers here today and they tend to be my, my friends. Yep. And uh, it'd be and wonderful. We had Apex here supporting us with four people, helping us with the car parking. Uh, but it might be just for a couple of hours, but if um, Dogs Queensland members can just think about the hand they can give to yeah. people running an Aggie show, that'd be great. Absolutely. That's a really important thing for all. Yeah. Anyone who's watching this video, I hear people, like both of us, are heavily, yeah. heavily involved in other clubs and, and running events. And you need to get involved, people. People talk about, oh, you know, everyone wants to bitch about parking or this and that. Get involved. If you don't like it, become part of the yeah. solution and change it. Don't complain about it. And for me, it's what you do here is great. And like, it's not without its issues, for sure. We'd no. all like more area. Yeah. But we all band together and make it work. No, well, yeah, that's that's absolutely right. And I think a sad scenario is looking at South Australia, for instance, where I was told they have no dog shows at agricultural shows, but I was um, corrected by Phil Thompson today. I think they still have a couple operating. But it'd be very sad to see us going down that track. Well, we've lost, in the last five years that I can think of, we've probably lost 10 Aggie shows yep. out of our... We, they've, they've, dogs have just vanished. Yeah. Well, Mount Gravatt immediately comes yep, to mind. Absolutely. That used to be the same weekend as our Queensland Kennel Council that I'm involved with. And, uh, yeah, I think it's it's a problem to just make the assumption as a dog person that things will continue as they always have. Yeah. Uh, it's important for uh, the next generation of dog people to, you know, rise to the challenge of um, putting their hand up and helping. Absolutely. I mean, the big thing that I keep championing, champion, championing that's not even right. Anyway, moving right along. Well, I, thank you, Ula. <laughs> the thing that I keep working towards is that people, we need to stop focusing on the negative things, focus on the positive things, yeah. and what you focus on is what you create and what you draw. So if you're focusing on the negative stuff, you just keep creating and seeing more trouble. Yeah. But when you get your head in a more positive aspect, 
all of a sudden things aren't so bad. No, well that's right. And a mantra for me this year has been the be kind, um, because there are always two sides to the coin. Yeah. And hey, this is our interest. You know, we've got volunteers that work at these dog shows, and and I think just to give a little bit of latitude is a good way to go. And a, a, I think a fast track for enjoying your sport a whole lot more. My grandmother always used to say, if you don't have anything nice to say, no one needs to hear it. Well, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so, um, thank you for your time today, no, absolutely and we pleasure. look forward to having a sit down chat with you in the near future about where we're going with Dogs Queensland and how okay. we move forward. So we're going to wrap it up here at Brookfield Show. Thank you so much for doing yep. a wonderful job. Okay. We'll see you again here next year, and to everyone, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like it, and share it. Yeah. Bye you. for now. Thank you.